It's the first word presented by Dr. Pepper as a new season of Dallas Cowboys football is upon us. And there's a lot of question marks that carry over from 2019 to 2020 in a 20 to 17 loss in week one to the Los Angeles Rams out in Inglewood, California. I'm Kyle Yeomans joined by a trio of former Cowboys staying socially distant a little bit for the post game stuff. So the first word I'm over on the other side of the studio, but I've got Barry Church, Nate Newton and Isaiah stand back joining us to break down this game and Nate, we're going to start with you. I mean, this is a, a, a Cowboys team that has so many high expectations, seemingly had addressed a lot of those needs in the offseason, but still there's a ton of question marks when it comes to run defense and even on the offensive side of the football with the offensive line. Uh, yes, sir, and I, and I agree with you, man. The word I was looking for, fellas, in this game was consistency, and we did not have that with our offensive line. We had a scratch on Irving, and we brought in a young uh, right tackle and steal. That was a, a, a shakeup right there for the offensive line. And then, you know, Aaron Donald went wild, man. I mean, he took advantage of the game. So we're not we weren't consistent up front uh, on the offensive line. Yeah, Nate, and I mean, to be honest with you, I am disappointed in our interior defensive line. I know we had some some big acquisitions in, in the form of Poe um, and our ability to try to bring Griffin and things of that nature, be able to move those guys around. But I'm disappointed in our inability to be able to stop um, their, the opposing team from running the ball right up the middle whenever they wanted to. I think we did a great job controlling the defensive side of things in terms of the secondary um, after that initial first half. Yeah. Um, but, I, but their ability to be able to run the ball really gave them the opportunity to win the game. Yeah, to your point, I mean, two things pretty much stood out to me in this game. One, which was to your point, the offensive line for the for the um, the Rams was outstanding this game. Um, pretty much Malcolm Brown and their um, rookie running back, Cam Akers, was able to do whatever they wanted. They weren't getting touched until at least five or six yards down the line of scrimmage. And the other thing that pretty much stood out to me was the simple fact that the Rams offense was able to keep this defense pretty much uneven the whole time. They really couldn't get a grip for the for the game plan that the uh, Rams had in store for them. When you come into a game and you're saying, hey, we're going to make you one dimension, whether you want to run all the time or pass all the time, the defense can get set. But when you give up 35 minutes of possession time mm. and you're 9 for 17 mm. on third downs and on the other side, you're only 3 for uh, three for 12 in 24 minutes, your defense was wore out. Yeah. Hey, you heard them. It really did seem like the, the offense really had some issues in terms of uh, really blocking for Dak Prescott, though. You talk about the defensive side of the football, there were problems there. But whenever you look on the offensive side, it was the offensive line, and it, it really didn't seem like Dak Prescott had a ton of time to throw the football there, Isaiah. Yeah, Dak didn't have the time that he needed. Now, we obviously knew coming into the game that, you know, there's going to be a young Connor Williams that was going to be there. Uh, we also knew that we had a, had a you know, new right tackle in there as well, not having Lyle Collins. But... Dak did not have the time he needed interiorly, right? We thought that he really, they were going to be able to squeeze it down, but they have some dude on the other side of the ball named, <laughs> named Aaron Donald. Um, and he seemingly made plays whenever he wanted to. He had his way. He disrespected Connor Williams and treated him like a, like a little brother whenever he wanted to. Um, so that's why Dak didn't have the time, and that's why we weren't able to have the big plays like you were hoping for with these receivers. Yeah, one player I think that stood out that they, they missed immensely, and that was Travis Frederick. I mean, and he, he was the quarterback and the heart and soul of that offensive line, and you could tell out there. I mean, Joe Looney did his best, but like you said, the interior of that offensive line, it struggled immensely, especially against Aaron Donald. He was throwing them, throwing them around like rag dogs. So they definitely have to pick up that part of their game if they want to continue the season on successful. You, and you know, what's amazing is they were only down by three. Yeah. And yeah. then here we come, you have a, a fourth down, and they gambled. Mm. And we lost that gamble, fellas. And when you lose that gamble like that, that takes a little bit of steam out of you. But we could have been even. That's true. And we had to fight back at the end and eventually lost it. Man, you talk about the, the fourth and three. That was the, the gamble that the Cowboys ultimately ended up making there. And it was after a third and six with a, a run play to Tony Pollard up the middle, gained three yards. And it looked like they were in fourth down territory throughout that drive. And the fact that they gambled on it wasn't necessarily a surprise, but it was something that I know stuck out to us as a, a gamble and as something that was – uh, at least questionable with a chance to tie the game and with a locked-in field goal range for, for Greg Zerline inside the 20-yard line. But I kind of want to go later than that, and I want to talk about the, the pass interference penalty called on Michael Gallup against J Jalen Ramsey on that long play that ultimately would have put the Cowboys back in the field position. Barry, did you agree with that call, and what did you see on that one? Um, as a defender, usually I would agree with this call, and I was like, <laughs> man, that is pass interference without a question. But this one was extremely, to me, it was extremely ticky-tacky. Um, the whole way going down 
the field. Both Michael Gallup and Jalen Rams were both hand tussling, hand fighting with each other. I felt like the ball placement was amazing by Dak Prescott. Um, it was just, you know, you can't, you can't get that extended. When you get that extended arm, that's an automatic red flag for the officials, and they're going to throw that flag. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. I mean, there's a whole lot of things that you can do as a receiver to, to get yourself a little bit of room. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, to, to Barry's point, you can't push off. You know, once you extend that arm, um, it's a wrap. And that's what, exactly what the referees are looking for. And, and to, be, be truthful, to be truthful, you don't want to get yourself in a situation where you're dependent on that play. Yes. Right? You don't want to be dependent on that long, that long, you know, fourth down play, third down play, whatever it was. You don't want guys to you, – you, your team was playing better than that. Mm. Right? They were running the ball substantially better than that. You know, but to – to Nate's point, you know, we couldn't ha drop back and throw the ball the way in which we wanted to, um, and that's because of the interior lineman. Mm -hmm. i tell you like this right here, man. That old Wiley vet, man, <laughs> just got paid millions of dollars. <laughs> hey, made a play for his team when it was necessary. He sold that very well. Yeah. He did sell it, and he was able to make a veteran type of move on that play whenever it was uh, – he looked like he was beat by Michael Gallup, oh, yeah. at least by a half step at that point. But it wasn't all negatives for the Cowboys in this one. I, and it, we had kind of talked about it previously that – uh, the fact that it was only a three-point game was still kind of something that was positive. And you look at some of the stats there for the Cowboys, really kind of even on both sides of the football. A big reason for that was really Ezekiel Elliott. I thought Ezekiel Elliott had a, a fantastic game, and he looked like uh, mid-season form, and it was something that I know, Nate, it stood out to you. Whenever you get the ball to Zeke, he's going to make some plays. He's, he's, he's still a catalyst. He's still a heart of this team, man. But, you know, when you got those other three great receivers or th potentially great receivers, along with uh, Blake Jarman, we don't know how extensive his injury is, you, you can make things happen. I think uh, Kellen Moore did a pretty nice job of mixing things in. But it, it, at big moments and big times, Michael Brockers and Aaron Donalds showed up big. And it kind of stymied us, and we never could get that rhythm and that word consistency we're looking for this year. Yeah, when you're playing from behind like the Cowboys are playing all day today, for the most part, right, yeah. you couldn't continue to give, you know, Zeke the ball in the, which, in, the, in the way in which you wanted to. I mean, they were very consistent in the run. He was killing them. The offensive line was getting great push, um, but they had to always revert back to the pass. Mm -hmm. So as soon as they had to revert back to the pass, well, now all of a sudden here comes Brockers, here comes Aaron Donald. So it kept taking them out of their groove that they really had, um, and it was very unfortunate. Yeah, the Cowboys never really got into that great rhythm like you were speaking of. Um, but I will say this. I'm, I am impressed with what Kellen Moore did with uh, Zeke Elliott. He was able to run the ball well with him in the trenches, but also he was able to feature him as a receiver out in the backfield. And I think that's what Ooh, they're going to yeah. do going forward with this season. I mean, this is a very talented running back who he can pet, catch the ball and run the ball just as well. So I think they need to use both the best of both worlds. And the Cowboys did not get through this game 100% healthy. A couple key injuries on both sides of the football. You look at the first one was really Leighton Van Der Esch from the beginning. It looked like Isaiah, I know you got a great look on that play where Leighton Van Der Esch kind of got caught upended by Malcolm Brown really in that first quarter. What did you see on that play and what is something that uh, I know that he's missing in that, that middle of that defensive line or the middle of the front seven rather. That's a huge loss for the Cowboys. Absolutely. I mean, coming off of the offseason coming off of the injury that he had, the neck injury, right? Mm -hmm. um, as, a, as a linebacker, now a middle linebacker, and you're, you're being asked to come in there and be the first point of contact once some people get past that DB, that first line, uh, that, that, that line of scrimmage. Um, we, there was question marks regarding Van Der Esch and whether or not he's going to be able to come in and deliver the blow that is, that's necessary for him in the heart of the defense. And, um, you know, as we were watching the game, we saw on that, on that goal line stand in the first mm -hmm. quarter, and Brown was coming through there, and he had a clean hit on Brown, and he hesitated. And that hesitation, he turned sideways, and, and he, instead of delivering the blow, he received the blow. And you never want to be in that position as a defensive player, no, as no, you no. know, Mary. You never want to receive the blow. You want to be the one to be the hammer. <laughs> um, and I think that that was the play. I think that nobody really noticed it, but I saw it early, and I think that that was a play that really messed up Vander Esch's neck. And unfortunately, you saw they were calling it a collarbone injury. I'm pretty sure it's a neck. Yeah, I mean, we saw them checking him out on the sidelines. And, and they say, like you said, it was a collarbone injury, but there was no raising of the arms to try to see if it, if it was affecting that area. It was all neck. So hopefully um, we can, you know, we can get the, the diagnosis of it and it's not as bad as we think it is. But you're completely right. When we saw him going head to head with uh, Brown, he kind of caught that tackle and he got a perfect hit on his neck or yeah. what it seemed like his neck. And um, hopefully uh, it's not as bad as we think. I just think you better get uh, Francis Bernard ready. Uh, okay, Joe Tom. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a realist. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a yeah. neck is a very ser yeah, serious yeah. thing, and I wish well for this kid, but it's always going to be that. Mm -hmm. Until he get through a season, or five to six games, uh, with consistent play, it, it's always going to be an issue.
Yeah, it's definitely something that's going to stick out for this defense. It's something they dealt with in 2019. They're going to have to do it so again in 2020. That's not all for all of our postgame coverage. Tune in to Cowboys game night coming up here in just a little bit. But the Cowboys do fall in game one of the 2020 season. 20-17 to 17, the final score. Cowboys 0-1 on the campaign.